I'm working on building this massive balanced arm camera mount for my shop so I can make these videos without having a tripod constantly in my way. The goal of this video is to use what I learned from my mistakes last time and the advice you all gave me and try to get this thing to actually work the way it's supposed to. Let's start out with getting this hinge to bend as far as it needs to. This is all the closer I can get it to the mill right now, so I need to improve the range of motion on this. So I'm going to make another piece to put in here so I have two pivots. So based on some of the things I struggled with the last time, I want to cast this piece as a split pattern. Doing that allows me to just make the design a little bit better for the machining. I didn't really show making this the last time because honestly it kind of scared me, but it worked out really well, so I'm going to show you how I did this. So I've just got a scrap of wood here that I'm going to use sort of as a mounting plate and then screw this onto it. What I'm going to do is put a couple of holes in here, let's say two inches apart, and reference them so they're equal from either side. And I'm going to go all the way down through the spoil board so that I can drop a pin in and reference this plate. You can see the tool paths here, and I've got it set up to drill the first hole right here, and then the second one will be two inches over, which will be right there, and they should be equidistant from the edges. So that second hole's in the wrong spot. I added two inches onto the value for the X, not the value for the Y. Not a big deal, we'll drill another one. Now I just need two holes in these pieces that are two inches apart and more or less centered. The position on the piece of wood isn't as critical as just being two inches apart, which is why I'm doing it on the mill. I can just run the dial over two inches and I'm only going about three-eighths of an inch deep, a little bit more than that. And now we just let the robot do its thing, twice. I'm gonna swap to some 3 8 pins and try to put this together now. So I didn't leave enough machining allowance here, so I've got a little bit missing in there, but that's what Bondo's for. You can see other than that, it fits together pretty well. There's a little bit of rock in one of them, I think. I'm going to get this filled in, cleaned up, painted. and So after I hit this with a coat of paint, I remembered I did not build in a machining allowance on the parts that I'm going to have to machine once I cast this. And since I was still set up, easiest thing, just go back and cut another one.
I did eventually manage to get a couple of honestly pretty mediocre molds built, but let's go for it. So I did a lot smaller sprue on these than the previous ones. And the idea being you want to keep the sprue full so that air doesn't get trapped in, lead to porosity. And it should also, I think, may or may not help with the sand wash issues I was having before. But the downside is when this gate cools and freezes up, it cut off any molten aluminum to be able to feed in here as this was cooling. So this cooled, shrunk a lot, same thing on this one. Pretty classic mistake not having any sort of riser to keep feeding this as it was cooling. Let's try again. So notice here that the sprue isn't staying filled as I pour. We'll come back to that in a minute. So that's marginally not really any better. This is just not a sufficient feeder to keep this from shrinking. So at this point I did what any of us would do, which is I went back and watched a bunch of other YouTube videos. Uh, so sort of a little side rant here on YouTube comments. I got a lot of comments the last time, well-intentioned, trying to tell me what I can do to better. And that's fine. But most of them said things like, your sprue is too big, with no explanation of why or what that does. So in trying to figure out the best way to feed this, I came across a video from Paul's Garage you know, link in description as usual, that goes into some very good, concise theory about gating, sprues, feeding, and all of that. So saying your sprue is too big without any explanation of what that means or what that does is not as helpful as saying you want to keep the sprue full so that air and the aluminum oxide film doesn't get mixed in with the metal as it's feeding into the mold. And if you can keep the sprue full, you'll end up with a higher quality casting with less porosity. That's more useful. So, not only was I running a smaller sprue before, but now I'm actually going to a tapered sprue. And so what this will do is essentially, the bottom of this will regulate the flow through the sprue. I'll have a little bit more room to fill into it, but this should do a better job staying full. And it will be easier than cutting it later because I can put it where I want. And similarly, I turned this as a feeder I'm trying to resist putting it on the middle of the thing because I was planning on referencing off of these two flat surfaces for machining. Since I am going to machine this surface, I'm going to try to put it right there. One of the other comments that seemed pretty intuitive was to do gloss paint on the patterns to make them easier to slip out of the mold. That makes sense. I don't know if it's necessary. We'll see if it makes a difference. This came out way cleaner than it did previously. Looks like it still split out a little bit there. Let me see if I understand this enough that I can explain it. The aluminum is going to come down the sprue, which is this hole here, go into this runner, and fill this up all the way over into this little hole, sort of a little trap, and the riser. So any trash that's in there, or any oxide that's in there, will hopefully end up over here and not in here. Once this kind of fills up a little bit, it will start going through these gates. And honestly, as soon as I cut that one, I realized I probably shouldn't have. We'll fill in this 
And after the part fills in, it will also fill the feeder. Then as the part cools, it will draw molten aluminum back down out of the feeder, back into the part. Let's see if that works. Well, that didn't work. Let's see if we can figure out why that didn't work. So I think one or more of three things happened here. One was I'm pretty sure I saw a little piece of trash fall down the sprue right as I started pouring. Two, I think I just got really conservative with the runner and gating. You can see a pretty distinct change in texture here and here. Like this either fed out of here or there, I'm not sure which, and then got to here and froze off. It looks like it may have gone part way up the runner here. You can see you can see a bit of texture difference. It's pretty impressive the difference in texture between the two. And or three, I was rushing and I don't know that I had the metal quite as hot as I should have. Still got a little bit of shrinkage there. Not nearly as bad as it was. So I think while this is still a terrible casting, it's maybe a usable part, but let's try another one. So for this one, I did a taller cope, give it a little bit more metal in the feeder here. Still got a little bit of shrinkage there, but not nearly as much. I'm gonna call this one good enough and do another one. It was suggested in the comments the last time that I might not have enough clay in my sand mix. It was also suggested that I had too much, but I'm still having trouble getting good molds. So I'm thinking I'm gonna add a bunch more, see what happens. You know, you watch these videos where people are casting and they always do this and then that. This is the sand with the extra clay in it. This is some of the mix I was using. This definitely holds together better, so I feel like some of this is just by feel. You just have to develop that over time, get the mix right and probably some personal preference too. I'd say that made a pretty big difference. That's probably the best one I've gotten yet, so I'm pretty happy with that. See, I'm keeping the sprue full. Yeah. Trying to. Well, there's a little bit of molten aluminum on it. See how it's filling up the feeder there? Yeah. We're gonna go nice and full on it. That's probably about all we can do. And then the rest of it. Best one yet. There's almost no shrinkage there. Did a much bigger feeder on this one. You can also see there's a lot less flash on this one. So real happy with that one. I like to show the process of figuring this out. I find the progression and learning process interesting to see. I hope you do too. For me, it's a, as interesting to see the learning process as the actual casting process. I like to learn from my mistakes, and the only thing better than that is learning from someone else's mistakes. And the more mistakes I make, you know, the more videos I can stretch this out into. I'm happy enough with this one, and I'm happy with this one, so I'm gonna clean these up and machine them. Since I put more thought into designing these and did a better job casting them, there's going to be a lot less machining on these.
So I tapped the hole in the bottom for the shoulder bolt to go through. Then on this side, drilled and reamed that one. So now I've got two hinges that'll actually hinge the whole way. It's also worth pointing out here just how much better quality this casting is. There's almost no porosity in this one compared to the ones that I did before where I was getting a lot of air and oxide and crud mixed in. That's just a lot nicer metal. I've still got a lot to do to get the up and down range of motion working right. And I also need to work out the balance springs for this. This is one of those projects that kind of spiraled out of control and is a lot more involved than I thought it would be. But it's coming along and hopefully next time I can get it finished up.